Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Geekbox. It's a small device that at first glance looks a little bit like a Wi-Fi router until you realize that it's A, a lot smaller than a typical Wi-Fi router, and B, in a lot of ways, more versatile. It's a little device that's the latest in a long line of products that we've seen over the last couple of years that basically has the guts of an Android smartphone or tablet stuffed into a little box that you can plug into a TV to run Android applications on a big screen. Now this, as the name suggests, is a geeky version. It's really a hacker-friendly device that, in addition to running Android out of the box, runs Ubuntu Linux, and you can switch back and forth between the two operating systems. You can install your own operating system, you can compile your own version of Ubuntu, you can load anything that you want onto it, and the case itself is meant to be opened up. You can take out the motherboard and use it with other accessories. So let's take a little look at what makes the Geekbox so geeky. It was, uh, it was sent to me by the folks at Geekbuying, uh, dot com, who sell it for about $110, although there's sometimes promotional codes that allow it to go for a little bit less. So we've got uh, we've got these adjustable antenna, and on the back there's a micro USB port, power, HDMI, micro SD card slot, Ethernet, and two USB ports. Under the hood it has a uh, Rockchip RK3368 processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, and 802.11ac Wi-Fi. There's dedicated buttons here for power, reset, and update. And in order to open the case, all you have to do is pull out the antenna and lift it open. Now we have access to the board itself. You can see that there's a heat sink in here, no fans. Uh, it gets a little bit warm, but never too hot when you're using it as just sort of a general media or gaming or Android or Ubuntu type device. But you can buy optional accessories, including a fan, if you're planning on hacking it in such a way that it's going to generate a lot of extra heat. Now, normally there's two little screws here that you'd have to undo in order to actually take out the board. I've already done that. So I'm just going to pop it out here so you can get a closer look. and show you one of the accessories, which is called the landing ship, which is basically what turns this board into a full-blown developer board. Uh, now we've got extra ports, GPIO pins, and uh, all sorts of additional features here that you can use for hardware or software development purposes. Other accessories include that fan that I mentioned, there's uh, an external display, that you can attach. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in the box, turn it on, and show you how it works using the sort of stock out-of-the-box software. Again, I'm not going to bother putting the screws in for now because that doesn't really make for great video. Are you in there tight? I've noticed that sometimes if you don't have both antenna in right, the internet connection can be a little bit wonky. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in an HDMI monitor, USB hub with a keyboard, mouse, and gamepad, power, and then press and hold the power button until you see the LED lights glow purple and then blue. Let's adjust the angle to look at the TV and pull over a keyboard and mouse. Now there's also this uh, remote control, which uses infrared, so it has to point directly at the box in order for it to work. And the remote includes arrow keys, OK, power, menu, home, back, volume, and mouse mode. So when it's pointed at the box, you can use it for basic navigation, especially if you're doing media playback type stuff, or you can use the mouse mode option to move an on-screen cursor. Now since I actually have a mouse, I'm just going to use that. Um, out of the box, it comes with the Kodi Media Center pre-installed, so I know a lot of people are interested in using boxes like this specifically for media playback, and that works. Works pretty well. Particularly if you remember where your videos are. There we go. So that's Kodi. Now I found that some file types work better than others when you're using Kodi, but you can also 
use other third-party applications. It does have support for the Google Play Store, so you can install just about anything. Uh, the built-in video player works pretty well for, uh, let's open up a 2160p 30 frames per second file here. Skip ahead a little bit here. And, well, this is not a 1080p monitor, the video plays back with no problem. Now there's not support for hardware accelerated video playback when you're using Ubuntu. So out of the box, this device ships with Android 5.1 and Ubuntu 14.04 installed. Um, maybe somebody will figure out a way to get hardware accelerated graphics using Ubuntu. But right now I find that things like uh, video playback are not great and uh, uh, when you're using Ubuntu. When you're using Android, it's not really so much of a problem. So video works, uh, YouTube works, Netflix works. Uh, real quick, I'm just gonna show you some gaming with an Xbox style controller here. Now a lot of Android games are designed for keyboard and touchpad, but if you've got one that supports this style of controller, it can work pretty well on a TV screen. So that's Android. I mean, just a quick look at the version of Android that comes with it. Again, it's, you know, it's really designed for use on smartphones and tablets, but if you know what to expect, uh, there's a lot you can do in terms of gaming, media playback, and so forth, using a keyboard and a mouse, a touchpad, a game controller, and so forth. Um, all that comes with it is this uh, controller, but you can use anything else that you can plug in. Now to switch to Linux, all I need to do is hit the power option, and then choose, instead of reboot or power off, reboot to Linux OS. And again, the version that ships with it is Ubuntu 14.04. Now the Geekbox was first announced in November 2015, and uh, I believe it started shipping in December. And there's a relatively active user forum already where people are sort of trading ideas. There's a wiki, there's GitHub where you can find source files and so forth. Now I've had uh, a little bit of an interesting time so far using Ubuntu because on the one hand you can see it boots pretty quickly. The applications that come preloaded work pretty well. and you can use it to surf the web and so forth. But there's some things that are a little bit difficult to do here. So for instance, if I go to YouTube, try to play a video, that's what happens. So you wouldn't necessarily want to use the Linux version, uh, the Linux software for media center capabilities, but if you wanted something for programming or web browsing or other uh, sorts of activities where you want sort of a desktop style experience and, and not just sort of that Android, you know, uh, mobile friendly uh, UI, then it's nice to have the option. You do have access to terminal And you can install third-party apps using sudo apt-get style commands. So let's uh, go ahead and install a word processor. And while it's doing that in the background, uh, what else can I show you? You have access to the Android file system, so uh, files that are saved on the Android side should be accessible in Linux. Now I did try to install some third-party applications with mixed results, so for instance, 
Under Games, I loaded Super Tux. And that's what happens when I actually try to run it. More successfully, I did install Firefox. So it comes with Chromium out of the box, but you can install the Firefox web browser if you prefer to use that. And again, this is all just with the stock software. Part of what makes the Geekbox special is you're not stuck with the stock software. You have all sorts of options for configuring it yourself um, if you're so inclined. It would probably help if I entered that properly. Probably work a little bit better if I weren't trying to install an app in the background. No, oh, and it's installed. Okay, so we've got Firefox up and running here. Let's actually close it because two gigs of RAM is not a ton. And then under Office, now we have Abbey Word, which I just installed. Now there's not a huge amount of built in storage space here, so. Um, you might want to resize the partitions to have more accessible via Ubuntu or Android, depending on how many files you want to. I can usually type better when I'm not stuck with a camera between me and the screen. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, you can install applications, you can use applications, uh, just don't expect a lot of 3D graphics for video playback or gaming. And then if you want to switch back to Android, you just click the reboot to Android option and it asks if you would like to reboot. You say yes, and a moment later you should be back in Android. So that's the dual boot operating system. You can also just install Android or uh, Ubuntu if you prefer or you can install LightBiz OS if you want sort of a mix in terms of a version of Android that has a windowed uh, a tiling environment allowing you to run Android apps that are in resizable, repositionable windows. Um, having used Remix OS recently, I'm not convinced that Android is really up to the task, but you know, you can do what you like because that's the, uh, that's the appeal, I think, of having a box like this, which is really designed to be um, uh, hacked, so. That is a quick look at the Geek Box, which sells for about $110, uh, plus whatever you want to spend on accessories. And it's a developer-friendly, hacker-friendly, media box, development board, Android, Ubuntu-capable little computer. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.